Now I'd like to discuss the latest feature in our BrainMaster 2.5 SE. That feature is called the Event Wizard. The way that you find the Event Wizard is if you select a specific folder, for instance we're in the Build Test 1, I can go ahead and go back to View and Change Settings. As I scroll down the page, at the very bottom, next to Use These Settings, we see a button called Event Wizard. As we click on Event Wizard, we notice a new control box. At first it looks fairly complicated, but once you get a chance to take a look at what's happening, it's fairly simple. As we start up at the upper left hand corner, we notice a series of numbers. It says event number and we see 1 through 16. Okay, What these events call to is they can be a combination of different things. For instance, an event can be one specific aspect of a protocol. For instance, as we look through this next one, and, and we'll go in detail in a few moments, but the first argument will be channel 1 theta amplitude is less than channel 1 theta threshold. Fairly simple, but that's one event. The events also could exist as equations and would handle all of the arguments of a protocol in one event. So keep that in mind. You have a combination of keeping it as simple as you'd like or as complex. So let's dive into this event number one and look a little closer. As we zoom in, we notice we have what's called an event condition. With the event condition, as we read across, we see if channel one, and we see the component of theta, and for instance, if we look at the drop down arrow, we see all the different components plus future expansion available. But for now, we see if channel one theta, and again, another drop down, we're using amplitude, but there's some other, other options there from frequency to percent energy to time over threshold and etc. So if channel one theta amplitude, and we look down to rule, is less than channel one theta, and as we slide over threshold, the result at the, at the bottom says event result. And our option that we have chosen is play MIDI sound. So this is similar to our standard protocols that are in the normal 2.5 SE, except it gives us one additional aspect that people have been asking for is now you can choose a different MIDI instrument per component. So for a standard alert protocol, for instance, which is theta down, beta up, and high beta down, each of those components can get their own MIDI sound. So let's look over at the sound properties box where we decide the sounds that are going to be used. This particular event is going to use a piano as the instrument, and we're used to these instruments from the MIDI voices, but now we get to choose which starting note. And we see these are the, essentially the keys of a piano. And even though the instrument may change, all of the keys or notes we can call to regardless of instrument. So we're gonna scroll down and pick a 37A, which is a very common note, and it's the 440. Okay, then we see piano. We still see our playing style of sustained or percussive. Our modulation, we see amplitude and pitch, which we're used to again from the MIDI options under feedback control. But now we also give an option of amplitude and pitch, or on and off. These are some different modulations that you may want to play with and feel if they work for your needs. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on amplitude and pitch. Starting loudness level is interesting because oftentimes depending on the sound system of your laptop, your sounds may be very quiet at times. We've given you now an independent volume control where you can say, let's go starting loudness of, oops, we'll go to, as we scroll down to drop down, we'll go to level 80. So when the client meets criteria, immediately the volume will be at a level which they can hear. It won't be real, real quiet. We also give you the availability to change the note 
or I'm sorry, the loudness change rate. And we'll make it 10. So every time you go a step above criteria, it's gonna change the amplitude by a figure of 10. Note change, same thing. Now we can, you can decide with the pitch how many notes each step will change. Okay, we have some musical scale choices. Again, for all of your music majors, you're gonna realize all of these different music modes. And for those of us that don't have a music background, your best bet is just to go ahead and try them and see if you like them. I tend to like the Chinese. Okay, with musical key, same thing, giving you full adjustable. What key do you wanna start in? We'll leave it in A. And then you can play note or chord. And we'll leave it in note. So this is just summarizing what sound is going to happen when criteria is met for this one event. Now you can imagine you, you're going to have the flexibility that you can have up to 16 events. So you can't get so complex that the sound is essentially garbled. You want to keep that in mind. You want to keep it simple for the different tones. But you can at least then really distinguish whether they're meeting criteria for one theta only or if they're meeting criteria for three different um, components, for instance. So let's go to event number two. Since we've done a theta down, let's go ahead and go beta up. We see that there was an equation listed in here, but we're not going to use the equation. We're going to stick with channel one. And now we're going to go beta amplitude is greater than channel one beta threshold. Now the amplitude and the threshold, that's being pulled from the main training screen so that you don't need to actually set a threshold. It's gonna still use auto thresholding, which you've been used to. And you notice you have these damping factors most of the dampening factors are when you're using things such as dynamic thresholding or range training, things like that, or variability. Um, with a simple amplitude protocol, you probably want to leave a dampening factor of zero because we don't want to average or slow the feedback down.